going to give a summary of what we learned tonight, and then we'll take questions. First of all, keep lots of nutritious food in the house. Get rid of the junk. People ask me all the time, again, I think I mentioned, if I have one child one size, another child another size, how do I give one ring dings? You don't. You don't. Nobody needs ring dings. You could possibly give one whole milk if they did need to gain weight, if someone was underweight, and keep the other one with skim milk. Pour it in the refrigerator if possible so they don't see the difference. Um, you could send the one who was underweight to school with some extra snacks or some higher fat things, so that wouldn't be an issue, okay? Don't refer to the child's weight but to the family's health. This is not singling out anyone. This is for the family. We're going to start eating healthier because we've been getting too many colds and, you know, Johnny wants to try out for soccer next year. We want to make sure he can run fast and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to single anyone out. Very important to build the self-esteem of the child who's overweight. They need a lot of praise. Praise for good grades, praise for helping around the house, praise for that was so nice that you held the door open for Mr. Smith. Praise. Because unfortunately what's happening is people are equating weight with worth. And that is just wrong. Someone is not a better person because of their size. But when all of this, you know, you got the media, you got the magazines, you got the TV, and you got what your friends are saying, it all comes together. And it's very, very detrimental because what happens is kids who start out thinking they can do anything in the world, which is what every child should think, suddenly don't think that anymore. And that's very sad. It's very, very important not to talk about, not, not to, you know, not to single out the child. Uh, many children are eating for emotional gratification, not physical hunger. We need to eat when we're hungry. If I could solve this, we'd be all set. We'd be all set. And you know, I, I have a few friends who have had uh, gastric bypass surgery. And that's very interesting because it makes your stomach smaller. So if you were only eating from hunger, you're all set. Except you weren't only eating for hunger. You were eating for other reasons, and that doesn't go away. So then it becomes quite the process of relearning what to do for stress. Lead by example. It's highly unlikely your child is going to eat broccoli if you put it on the table and your husband says, oh, I never eat that. Well, that's it. Nobody's eating that. So you need to lead by example. <coughs> Same thing with the milk. Now, I know a lot of adults don't drink milk. A lot of people are lactose intolerant. Uh, lactose intolerant, you know, if you had a large piece of Greg's chocolate cake with a cold glass of milk one day and it upsets your stomach, that doesn't mean you're lactose intolerant, okay? Because that's what people do. They have one situation and they decide they're lactose intolerant. Regardless of what you drink at dinner, it should not be soda. The children should have milk or water. That's your choice. Other than that, I guess you're not thirsty. Well, that's all. And you know, this is what it's come down to is years ago, did your parents feel bad telling you that? No. This is what you're having. You're having milk or you're having water. Why not? <coughs> Is there an array of, of different choices? You know, even with what people cook for their children, why are there four different meals? I can just imagine that happening in my house. That would never have happened. This is dinner. So we have to get back to that. You know, I, my own view on it is that people started working more, they weren't home as much. When you're home all day, you have no problem saying, go find something to do. When you're working all day, now you feel kind of, oh, I've been away all day, and you tend to give in more. And I think that's what's happened. But children need structure. They need times. They need to know what they can and can't eat. Everyone tells me there's battles at the, at the dinner table every night. Make some rules and make them every night rules. It's milk or water, except for Fridays when we have pizza, then you get to have soda. Fine. So there's not going to be any big fight on Tuesday. It's not a big surprise. Um, bad habits are passed from the parents to the children, to their children, to their children. It continues on and on. Luckily, so are good habits. Okay, so if you start a good habit, your child will pick that up. That's how they'll raise their children. All the money in the world, all the material things you could possibly want, don't mean a thing if you don't have your health to enjoy them. The best gift you can give your child is to teach them the keys to a healthy life. Healthy eating, fun activity, 
and lots of positive reinforcement to build self-confidence so they can enjoy everything life has to offer. That's what it's all about. Okay? Thank you very much.